Hey, what's up Reefers? Let me just start off by saying that I'm super excited about content in the following few weeks. We have some amazing content lined up, ready to go. I'm super excited to show you guys. Uh, but some of them are still developing stories. So I'm trying to just, I'm trying so hard to hold back. If this is your first time here, my name is Moki. This channel is the Inappropriate Reefer. It's essentially the documentary of how I am growing as a hobbyist. Uh, we started off with the 45 gallon cube tank and then we upgraded to a 17 gallon drop off rockfish tank and then we somehow went Benjamin Button and went to a 9 gallon planted tank. But today our focus is on the 45 gallon cube tank. This tank has been up to up for almost three years and it has been pretty highly experimental in terms of what I'm keeping in there. And today I'm going to address two things in this tank. First thing, we're gonna talk about frog spawn. And before I talk about frog spawn, I have to tell you guys about the Monty Porter cap. Now, if you have been a part of the Reef Squad for a while, you know that I've had this Monty Porter cap for a long, long time. It used to be a small frag that sits over here, and then it has grown into this nice little colony of Monty Porter cap. Now, for the past couple months, I've noticed that this, this coral has been having bolt spots like this. Now the ball spot in the back can easily be explained by the bubble tip anatomy which has grown to a pretty large size. It has been stinging the back and that's why it's all bleached out and that's a given. You know, I expected it, accepted it, that's why it's staying there. Now what I cannot explain are those ball spot right there, right there, right there. And if we swing to the front right there. The ones in the back, um, I'm pretty certain it's from the frog spawn. If you look really carefully, you see the frog spawn at the, the tentacles at edges, right? These are kind of like fairly and elongated. So these are sweepers. This is basically when the frog spawn colony detected that corals nearby. It's trying to reclaim its territory. So it's sending a sweeper to kind of like sting out the corals to, to uh, make sure they don't enroach on this, um, uh, the rock that's growing on, which they're kind of competing for space right now. So as you see, the top left, all the tentacles are relatively stubby, they're not elongated. But all the ones downstream close to the bubble tip anatomy as well as the manipura and the pallies, they're all really stringy and long. So these are sweepers. Now it seems like the frog spawn and bubble tip anatomy has kind of sorted out the difference. I'm not too worried about the anatomy because uh, it can move. It has a foot that can move away if it's not too happy. And as you can tell, like the, the tentacles at the edges are a lot shorter and stubbier. Um, and once in a while, I do see the frog spawn and the uh, bubble tip anatomy holding a hand, meaning that they're stinging each other. If they stick, they're stinging. So they're stinging each other, but that does not, doesn't happen too often, maybe every three or four days. So they do have this line drawn. Now, with the Monty Pro cap, there's no way for it to defend itself, except for growing the other way. <clears throat> So unfortunately, all the edges right there, it either got stung by the uh, Purple Death Pally or it got stung by the Frog Spawn. <coughs> and the reason I want to talk about the Monteparry Cap is because that I actually posted a photo of this colony on my Instagram at Inappropriate Reefer and I was kind of perplexed. I was wondering where do these bolt spots came from? And there are a lot of speculation. Number one, most people said that check for pests. Uh, for especially Monty Pora eating nudibranch. So I did that for a couple nights. Flashback. Crap we do for our reef tank. Okay, um, not exactly 2.30 because I kept hitting off the alarm. But let's see what we got. All right, right now it's pitch black. Let's just shine the light on and see what we got. Maybe I'm up too late. Uh, I don't see any pest on here. Well, maybe it is not pest after all. I don't know. Well, again, maybe I'm too late. I mean, it's 4.30. People are saying like 1 or 2 o'clock. So maybe I'll try again. Oh God, gotta try this shit again. All right, reefers, it's uh, 1.15 right now. I 
don't see any Ludibrank. The only thing that seems kind of odd is an ammo crab um, just chilling right there. But typically, ammo crab won't pick on SPS, at least I don't think so. Maybe it is just resting there or kind of picking off any algae growing on the dead spot, although there's no dead spot right in front of me. Um, maybe I did not wake up late enough? I don't know, I'll, I'll try to stay up over the weekend, uh, one of the days, to see if there's really anything picking at it at night. Alright guys, 1.30am uh, on a Friday. Oh, just checking to see if there are anything that resemble pest. Nothing looks out of place. No Montipora. Nudibranch. We do have a blue green chromas I just woke up. Sorry, dude. Oh, shoot, look at this. We do have a pretty fat tiger tail. End of flashback. Maybe like one or two more nights. Uh, wake up in the middle of the night, maybe like 2 or 3 a.m. and see if I can catch any new to brand in action. But I'm not holding my breath. Uh, the second possibility is that I'm actually dosing a BLS2 part and the uh, alkalinity solution is pretty close to the return pump. Meaning that um, I'm guessing maybe like uh, when, the, when the alkalinity solution got dosed, the pump picked it up and then got blasted out from the uh, return, <coughs> return nozzle. And it'll go this way and then it got pushed by the gyri and maybe some of the solution got blown onto uh, the Manipura cap. I am not exactly sold on that because uh, the solution will get pretty diluted at this point and then this, it doesn't make sense. The patterns doesn't make sense. So if assuming there's no Manipura nudibranch, I think the only logical solution left or the only logical reason left is the frog spawn. Especially if you really look carefully to the pattern, okay, you see that most of the stinging happens right here, right on that rim, highest point and then right here along the edges and these are all dots and you notice that no issue at all on this side away from the frog spawn although personally i have not seen the frog spawn send out long stingers but that is not to say maybe in the middle of the night uh, it will send a stinger and uh, just go to town there's no telling although to be fair the toy the two times that i actually woke up at night trying to catch nudibranch the frog spawn is pretty shrunken up, as expected. I didn't expect it to really expand. And I just want to show you guys um, how the frog spawn looks at night. Sweepers is still there, but it's not really elongated. It is sweeping against the um, uh, the purple death. That's why it's looking pretty so What is, oh, that's a fish. I was like, what is that thing coming out from down there? Uh, yeah, it's a green chrome is a, apparently sleeps under underneath the uh, money party cap. But the sweeper does not look that long, so I'm still kind of curious about those bald spots. Um, I do see the ammo crab kind of right on the edge, but I think ammo crab picks at um, hair algae, or algae, <laughs> as UK would call it. So that's probably not the culprit. So I don't know, man. I mean, it's uh, I don't see any nudibranch or anything like that. Usually, um, around this time around like 10 o'clock 11 o'clock is when the frog spine is the openest uh the, the largest so kind of right now so i'm not 100 percent sold on the fact that maybe it's a frog spine that's stinging the manipura cap that's causing these bald spots but at the same time it is probably the most likely reason now offhand some people said that maybe it's the bicolor blenny that's picking on the manipura cap but i have not seen the bicolor blenny attempting to scrape algae off the Monty. So I'm not convinced that it's this little guy as well. So this remains to be a mystery. Um, I'm gonna keep you guys posted. I'm gonna try to wake up um, at least once more at night just to make sure there's no uh, Nudu brand kind of lurking in the shadow and coming out at night. Uh, so we'll rule that out first. And regardless of whether it's new to brand or not, I am gonna frag the frog spawn because seriously, it's uh, 
I think it has doubled in size in this half a year. So it is time to frag it back a little bit. All right, so that's number one. Well, the second thing that I want to talk to you guys about is actually this little girl right here. So for you hardcore reef squat, long-term reef squat, you know that I've had this little female Yashago beef for a long, long time. I want to say almost two years now. <clears throat> and for the two years, she went through three males. I may as well name her Black Widow. For one reason or another, the male never survived, but the female lived on. So this past weekend, I was at my local fish store Congressional Aquarium. Flashback. All right, guys, I'm at Congressional Aquarium, one of my uh, LFS. Super excited because after half a year, actually more than half a year, almost nine months of search, I finally found these guys right here. These are number one, Yasha Gobies. And number two, they're male. And the reason you know they're male is because um, their pectoral fins, you see they have like black marking. Now the problem with these guys is that um, they have kept the bread ones now, but for some reason the kept the bread male do not have that black marking on their pectoral fins. So it's really hard to sex. So I've been waiting for a long, long time. And finally, they got two. And I think they're about like 40 bucks or so. Uh, so absolutely, 100%, I'm gonna bring one of these guys home. I've been looking for one of you guys for the past, I think almost nine months. My female has been by herself for a long, long time. But this also means that I need to put the mesh back onto the tank, at least initially, until he found the same boat hole, uh, the, bur uh, the burrow as the female. I'm, oh man, love it. Christmas is here, Christmas is early. All right, about to head off to work. Here's the morning of the second day and we see the male Yashagobi has settled in quite nicely. It's actually moving around a little bit, but it's hovering near the entrance of the burrow. Um, I'm not sure if the female's in there or still on the other side because the entrance kind of collapsed. Um, but at least that's a good sign, you know? He made it through the first night. Usually that's the riskiest. And uh, he's no longer hugging, well, he's not no longer on, no on the wall. Now he's uh, swimming around exploring the ground a little bit. So I'm gonna head off to work and we'll see how things goes tonight. Now, the male Yashagobi was here up until half an hour ago. Uh, I had to remove the top mesh for filming because I want to make sure the tank looks clean and presentable when I, when I show you guys. And then he disappeared. He disappeared. I couldn't find him at all. That scared me. I look, I look on carpets, right? I check behind the tank. I just don't see him anywhere. Uh, so unless he, he's back in a hole and the rock works somewhere, I have no idea where he went. I checked the overflow and it's not there. So this is literally a developing story. I will keep you guys I will keep you guys posted. Uh, after I finish filming, I'm gonna check the uh, I'm gonna check the sump. I actually have a sump sock right now. So if anything, if he actually dove into the sump somehow, uh, he's gonna be down there. So I'll, I'll double check. Uh, but yeah, this actually worries me a little bit. The fact that I don't see him, because for the last two days he has been pretty good about staying out in the open, and he seems relatively comfortable in the tank now. Uh, so this worries me a little bit. So that's that. Now, actually, the last bit of little news I want to share with you guys uh, without making this video go too long, like I always do when I, whenever I talk about uh, my fish tank, is about the blue-green chromis. <clears throat> now, before we do that, let's feed him a little bit because I love feeding these guys. And we'll wait for the water flow to pick up. Oh, look at it. Look at the clown. The clowns have learned to splash water. All right, here we go. Okay, so these blue-green chromas has been awesome. They have been doing amazing. Every day in the morning, I'll count them, and then every night uh, before I go to sleep, I'll count them, and it's always eight. They have, like these eight have been together in this tank, um, I'll say since August. Uh, and before that, uh, the, the, I lost one, and before that, I think they were together for a couple months as well, with no issue. So really, these guys has been uh, pretty bulletproof and proven in this tank. And I honestly attribute the success, well, short-term success to, <laughs> uh, number one, feeding pretty frequently. I try to feed like at least two or three times a day. And number two, the clowns, the aggressive clowns actually. Uh, because like 
my clowns are so aggressive that they'll dive bomb them once in a while. Even though they don't make physical contact, they just kind of break up the group. That really doesn't give them a lot of time for infighting. Um, as you know, if you're familiar with Green Chromas, a lot of people have trouble keeping them in the group because infighting always happens and the weakest one always get picked off one after another. But um, I don't have such issue here. But the issue I do have is that the fact that they're all doing so well, they're all growing. And the smallest one now is, is now the size of the largest one when I first got this group. Um, and it has been, I'll say, probably eight or nine months, or if not even longer, since I've um, started adding green chromas to my tank. So they have some time to grow. Well, along with a larger fish means bio load, and I started seeing my skimmer pulling out more and more um, skim mates. And initially, I thought I can get away with a, a show of green chromis because I always have the plan to upgrade a tank to 120 or 150 gallon. I thought that okay, by the time by the time these guys outgrow this tank, the larger tank will be ready. But of course. Things don't always happen like that, especially in the reef aquarium hobby, uh, reef hobby. So I don't know. I don't think I can keep them in this tank for much longer. And I do notice that at least last week, this week has been better. Last week, the clowns have been hyper aggressive towards the blue green, chrome, uh, the blue green chromis. Like normally they kind of chill. They like kind of like every couple of minutes they dive once and go back in. Usually on camera, they're a little bit more vicious because they think food is coming. So they, they're viciously defending the territory. But for whatever reason, last week, the clowns have just been relentless, pinning these guys like right on, along these edge. They cannot even show. They were like scattered. So I was, I was heartbroken because I love these guys. I love to see them just kind of hang out. Uh, I know like bickering once in a while is okay, but that was a little too much even for me. Uh, so that really got me thinking. But this week they kind of calmed down a little bit. However, it does not change the fact that in terms of bio load, they are, they're getting large. They're starting to get large. So I am seriously giving thought about um, passing them on. Like, oh man, it's, it's hard for me to even say it. Yeah, just to give them up. Um, because even if I get a large tank now, it still take a while for me to cycle. And of course, who knows when the large tank is going to come, uh, especially with the other project I have going on right now. Uh, the more project I have, the more the pickier I am with the tank I'm looking for, because I feel like, okay, if you want me to sacrifice time right now from other projects to build, big, make this big tank, this tank better be worth it. So I get become pickier. That's why, uh, man, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't. I just don't feel like at the rate they're growing, that by the time I have the large tank ready, they are just gonna uh, they're just gonna overload the small tank. So I think it's probably a matter of time before I have to just catch them all and move them to a larger home, similar to what I did with the uh, blue tank, which is okay. I mean, as long as they have a happier life, right? Um, I was seriously, seriously considering it strongly, last, especially last week, uh, when the clowns are super, super aggressive. I think they're probably like, something is going on with these two guys. I think um, they may be trying to spawn or something like that, and they're defending their territory. This is completely guessed, by the way. I'm just making shit up. Uh, but this week, they seem to have calmed down a lot. They seem to be back to normal. So that kind of makes me feel a little better. But uh, the, the green chromas are growing up, and... The fact that I don't have a large tank lineup yet makes me feel like I should probably plan, uh, prepare something for these eight guys because they've been so great. And it's so rare for Chromas to do so well together. So, uh, that's a bit of sad news. But uh, happier news is that the Jawbreaker Mushroom is doing well. It's com it has completely covered up the one inch frag plug. So it has really adapted to the light, to the tank water. So that's good. Um, but yeah, I think the, my most urgent thing right now is actually dealing with the frog spawn. I need to frag it. It's just destroying things here. And I, I probably need to remove the Sunny D colony right there as well as the Purple Death. They're just not happy camber. They're being shaded. They're being stung by the frog spawn, being stung by the 
by the Rose Purple of Nami, and then they were squeezed out by the Monty Pro Cap. Monty Pro Cap has bald spot, not happy, but then it's growing viciously. It's growing really fast, actually, if you compare to compare each video. But yeah, oh, speaking of which, the A can as well. Check out all the all the head is, that's popping up. Look at these guys, and the new head actually has like a rainbow vibe. And speaking of vibes, uh, I feel like the coils are starting to adapt to the Aquatic Life T5. And the Zoa is opening up, and the color has kind of shifted a little bit. It's a little bit more intensified. And the Magician, it was kind of bleached out before, but the color is coming back. You see, the color that's coming back is actually really vibrant. So it was a little transparent before, and the vibrant, the new bits that came in, is actually really vibrant. So it's really cool. So it's really cool to see all these like subtle transition um, of the corals. And let me swing over here. And I noticed the elegance coral actually looked the best around 12 a.m. It's really odd. Just right before the light goes out, it just puff up a lot and looks great. And Xenia still not pulsing. I do figure out my pH. All right, as I told you earlier, if you get me to start talking about my fish tank, I can keep going and going and going. But this update, it just serves as like a, a way to kind of get everybody caught up before I start dropping the huge updates later um, in the next few videos. I'm, seriously, I really can't wait. Uh, great things happening to all the different tanks and most of them still developing stories. So I'm trying to get all the footage down first before I share. So please look forward to it. All right, guys, with that said, I'm going to end this update right here. Thank you for hanging out for, holy crap, this is almost 20 minutes again. I'm so sorry every single time I do this. If you're still here, you're indeed a hardcore Reef Squad, and you're still watching this, leave a comment below. Let me know who are the hardcore Reef Squad. Uh, I personally thank you. All right, guys, uh, with that said, I hope you guys have a good week, and uh, Christmas is coming soon. I hope you guys are enjoying company of your friends and your family. And uh, be kind to one another. I will catch you guys next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. sharp. Enjoy the week, guys. What's up, reefers? I have Nico here. He's a chihuahua, six years old. For some reason, he doesn't like guys. 90% of my audience, guys. Uh, see ya.